<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live stream on a, a Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning for me at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I uh, really wanted to start uh, streaming a live coding session to see how we can have a more live version of the coding uh, lesson that we have typically on this channel. But, um, you know, maybe you guys can have some input today and ask me whatever questions along the way, uh, along the development of today's program of creating a bar chart. So I have my software set up to perform a lot of the live streaming here. Let's see how smoothly it goes today. Uh, the one thing I want to do before I start today's stream is to kind of send out a link to my Twitter stream uh, so that folks can join the channel here. So uh, creating a bar chart today. Uh, hopefully the uh, YouTube's gods will be kind to me. I don't know if some of you guys were here last time, but we definitely were not able to stream successfully on my computer and I had to move over to my iPad. And I think the iPad quality <clears throat> is probably not uh, the greatest of video. So today, I'm just gonna keep a close eye on the chat here. And I'm gonna get started in just a couple of minutes. Uh, I know a lot of you guys can actually uh, go back on the stream whenever you guys are watching it to see what's happening in the beginning. Uh, regardless of it being live or not, you can actually scrub to the beginning of the uh, the video to see what's going on. All right. So hello, everyone. Um, we have the usual folks uh, in the live stream here. And let me know if you guys are actually interested in the live chat window i find that it's easier to maybe watch a live stream when there's actually something to read so hello everyone um and also let me know if the audio delay is okay which is something i always tend to ask which can get a little frustrating after a while uh, yeah so you guys can see the uh, the Xcode project that I'm going to be typing in, which is just right here. So I'm going to start removing a little bit of code. Um, okay. So let me just clean up my dashboard a little bit. And here we go. So, yeah. So audio is fine. Audio is good. Um, I think I have my music going on here, which keeps me company. Are you guys able to hear uh, like background music? I'm trying to reduce that as much as possible. But I think it's probably still audible. Okay, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Okay, hello everyone. Um, all right, so let's kind of get started here today. Uh, it's not going to be you know, not a whole lot of discussion on things regarding soft skills, such as how to be a good programmer or how to study programming. But today, instead, we're actually going to be doing some real coding. And when I say real coding, uh, I mean actually looking at a Xcode project. That is what you see right here. Um, and I'm going to start immediately coding right now. Uh, inside of view controller right here, um, we have this brand new project that I've created before starting this stream, just so I can get the windows all properly set up. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, switch over to the iPhone seven simulator and run this project just to make sure we get our application up and running here. Cool. So, okay. All right, so the app is up and running. And if you go, uh, click on this bar chart demo guy, it kind of just brings you back to the previous app. Uh, hopefully you guys are aware of how iOS 10 works by now. 
And this is the chart that I want to be able to render out for you guys. Okay. <clears throat> and this chart right here is not all that difficult to kind of get all of these bars going. Uh, there is a couple of different tricks to doing this. And a couple of drawbacks to this approach is that uh, I haven't really figured out how to draw the axes, axes, uh, the axes of this bar chart. For example, the x axis should have some kind of maybe a time axis, and the y axis should uh, let you know what exactly these values are. But uh, if you guys are, you know, in need of a bar chart, a very simple one, this is a approach that you can take. Okay, so cool. Uh, all right, so are you guys still in the chat? I'm just wondering here, as the chat has seems uh, seems to have died on me. But anyhow, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to remove the uh, did receive a warning bit of code here, and hopefully today's lesson will not be more than 30 minutes because. Uh, most of the time I can't find myself talking for longer than 30 minutes and remain coherent. Okay. So the first thing to realize is this UI view controller. What I want to do is to use a UI collection view controller instead. Uh, this guy right here, what you see that's sliding horizontally is just a very simple horizontal collection view. So instead of uh, creating that collection view yourself, what you can do is uh, just subclass view controller as a UI collection view controller. And there you go. So when you start doing this, right, and then you try to run the app, it doesn't really work because the uh, the default setup using the storyboard, and it tries to put this inside of a, uh, inside of a container that looks like this right here. Uh, so that's that view controller file, and then this is the crash. So when you're doing this, it's it's a little strange. Uh, what you can do is a couple of things. I'm going to modify the app delegate so that uh, it actually knows how to use the window with this new view controller. So I'm going to create the window myself manually. And a lot of you guys probably seen this before. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. You get the window to be the bounds of the entire screen. Uh, make it visible and then window uh, window uh, root view controller equals uh, view controller like that it actually takes in a layout so what is this layout I'm going to create it in here uh, UI collection view flow layout like that and uh, we should be okay so I run this and you're gonna see a black screen when this application renders out okay so just watching the analytics of today's live stream as I go along. We have 88 uh, viewers watching currently. And we have our black screen, uh, not of death, but just a regular black screen. And we can start coding inside of here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to change the collection views background color to dot white. And some of you guys have been asking me about how I type so darn quickly inside of Xcode, which isn't really a trick, but I'm just used to how the auto completion works. And I just hit the enters and the tabs as I see the code pop up. And it's not that difficult once you are accustomed to how the auto completion works. So nothing but a couple of years of experience, uh, maybe half a year of experience, and you'll get really, really used to it, uh, just like how I am. Okay. All right. So enough talking. Let's take a look at how to render out a very, very simple horizontal bar chart, which is pretty easy. And the trick is you need to somehow, you know, return a couple of items, which is number of items in the section and just return, you know, perhaps five or 10, whatever value you want to test with first. And then uh, your collection view also needs to return this thing called a cell. So what is this cell guy? Well, returning collection view, you have to DQ this cell uh, using this long, really long-winded method called DQ reusable cell. 
And you need the cell identifier first somewhere inside of your view controller. So I'm going to create it here, uh, cell ID. And again, all of this is done in code. So uh, it's a lot easier if you just type out everything really quickly without having to mess with the funny, the good old storyboard. So the last thing to kind of do here is to just say collection view, uh, register class of some kind of class. I'm going to use a default UI collection view dot self like that with the cell ID. So once you do this right here, I'm going to actually let the cell equal that cell dot background color equals dot blue and just return this cell. And hopefully running this, we'll see five blue cells inside of the controller. And it's running and we get five of these blue cells. Okay. Oh, right. So, yep, just a, yeah, I'm just trying today, uh, today's live stream to make sure I can code live and see if it is a, you know, uh, a video I actually want to, you know, do in the future again. I think live streaming is, uh, it's interesting, but it does tend to get a little long. And especially when you're trying to code live and have people watch, it gets a little bit tricky because you have to figure out, figure out how the things work on the fly here, which is not all that easy. So in order to get these things to span the entire window, uh, all you have to do is to change the height of these blue boxes. And that's also pretty easy. Uh, you have to conform your view controller to UI collection view delegate flow layout. And somewhere down here, you have to say size for item. And this returns some kind of CG size guy. And then uh, this takes in a view of well, a CG size with a width and a height. I'm going to use a width of perhaps, I don't know, 30. And the height of view frame height. I think that should work. And let me just get a drink of water while this thing renders out here. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, good to see you guys. All right. So that's the bar chart right there. Um, the thing I wanted to do is to change this to perhaps 25 to see how the rendering works inside of this little controller. And if you change it to 25, it kind of looks like that. And the issue right now is that it's in a horizontal or a vertical scroll mode. So this means that um, all of the rendering is not exactly the way we want it to, uh, to render. Uh, the issue or the fix for this is to just change the scroll direction. So I want to change it to this horizontal-ish layout that looks like that, which is pretty easy. If you just go and view the load here and type in uh, da, 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 da. you say collection view, uh, collection view flow or collection layout as UI collection a view flow layout. And you say uh, scroll direction equals dot horizontal. And once you have this, the collection view starts to scroll left to right instead of up and down, which is what this guy is doing. And as you can see, it kind of goes left and right like that. And cool. So now what we want to do is to specify some kind of actual cell for this thing instead, uh, instead of using just this regular collection view cell. And I'm going to do that with a brand new file just to make sure all the code is nice and tidy. That was a bar uh, cell perhaps. And uh, you need to import UI kit so that uh, UI collection view cell is exposed. And this class is something I want to subclass as my bar cell. Put a colon there. Instead of here, you have to overwrite a couple of things, which is first overwrite a knit frame and call super init with that frame parameter. I'm going to say background color equals dot yellow perhaps. 
And then finally, this guy pops up, click enter, and you get that to autocomplete correctly. So instead of here, I'm going to use bar cell instead of the collection view cell. And I'm going to remove that line that sets the cell to uh, the blue background color. So uh, this kind of makes the cell show up as yellow inside of our collection view controller here. And you can scroll it left and right. So nothing too special. And uh, let's see what we want to do with this bar cell here. So the idea uh, in rendering these bars to kind of have a varying height, the trick is really simple. You, you just want to add a simple view inside of this bar cell that represents each one of these bars. So I'm going to say let bar view uh, be of type UI view and let view equals UI view perhaps view dot background color equals dot red and just return this view. Finally, you execute this closure to get your bar view like that. So uh, now that you have this, <coughs> this bar view, you can add it inside the sub view of the entire cell, which will get you this bar view. And uh, now you can decide how you want to lay out this bar inside of your cell. So I'm going to use these anchors to make it show up. And whenever you use anchors, you need to set this really, really long property to false, just so that you can anchor things and make it uh, take in effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, anchor it to the top, left, right, and bottom. And because I don't have my extension, I will need to do this manually. So bar view, top anchor, uh, constraint to this guy right here. This is going to say, hmm, let's see, top anchor. Okay. And then you have to set is active equals true, which is a pretty annoying property to uh, specify. So bar view dot left anchor dot constraint uh, left anchor is active equals true. Next you say bar view dot right anchor dot constraint. And you also need to constrain it to the right side. Uh, so that's true as well. And then finally, let's see. Okay, we have Johan Albrechtsen with 10 DKK. Uh, not exactly sure what a DKK is, but uh, good to have the donations nonetheless. If some of you guys can tell me what a DKK or what the equivalents uh, in dollars are, that'd be nice. Uh, Barbie, let's set the bottom anchor constraint to also bottom anchor. Uh, it's not that the dollar amount really matters to me. I'm just interested in the actual value. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to support the channel today, <laughs> Donkey Kong Country, I, I definitely thought of something that sounded like Donkey Kong. So I'm going to render or run the application to get my bar view uh, to show up inside of my cells here. So you see how they're all red now. And previously we set the background color to yellow. So that means, uh, well, what does that mean? Well, bar view is what you're seeing here. Okay. Uh. All right. So uh, the next thing we need to accomplish for this uh, controller or for the, the bar chart is how we can actually modify the height of each one of these bars and the bars that you see are being controlled using a height anchor. So that's kind of the trick for today's tutorial. And there's this thing called a height anchor that you can specify instead of the top and bottom anchor right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the bottom anchor. And instead of clamping or anchoring it to the top, I'm going to give it a height anchor instead. So let me comment that on this guy. I'm going to say bar view dot height anchor dot constraint to so I'm going to constant and uh, we can say perhaps 200 is going to make our bar uh, anchored at the very bottom, but have a height of 200. So I'm going to set this to is active equals to true. And then run this, you'll see 
the full effect of setting this height anchor instead of the top uh, to be clamped at the very top here. So now you see these little small bars with the, uh, the correct anchor height. So uh, how do we want to use this height is kind of tricky. And the way to kind of make this all work is to say perhaps, uh, let's see, var, uh, bar height, let's see, constraint, I guess we'll call it, is a NS layout constraint type optional. And uh, what you want to do is you actually say bar height constraint equals, uh, let's see, bar view. Let me just type out this height anchor guy again. Uh, constraint to some constant, let's say 300 this time. Then you need to set this guy is active equals to true. Now I'm going to get rid of that line right there. So now I can actually modify this constant value later on via bar height constraint dot constant. And you can set it to whatever you want, perhaps 100. And that's going to change the height of your bar now. Yeah. So you can add a label on top of the bar if you wanted to. And that will tell you exactly what that value needs to be. But, you know, we haven't gotten there yet. So let's see what we can do now. Okay. So uh, now that we have some way to modify the constant of the, the height right here, we can really start modifying it outside of the, uh, the cell. So I'm going to keep the 100 and 300 here because uh, we're going to modify it later on. So let's go to view controller and specify some values as my bar chart value. So in other words, let's say let values appear inside of view controller equal, I don't know, five, uh, 200, 300, 400, 500 and 600. And inside of my cell for item right here, I can try to modify this cells height constraint. So cell the bar view height. So you can't see that constraint unless you cast this as a bar cell. And this makes, uh, let me just build my project here. This constraint, let's see, bar height constraint dot constant equals uh, values <clears throat> with the index path of uh, item. And I don't know if that's going to work because this is a CG float value. That is the problem. So let's just get it that way. Uh, so I really hate having to cast my objects like this. So instead of doing that, let's make this a array type of CG float. So I don't have to cast it down like that. It automatically knows that each individual value inside of this array is a CG float. Hence, no casting is required. Okay, so index out of range. Uh, what that means is, let's see. You know, we really need to return values that count instead of just a raw random value of 25. And let's see. Uh, some questions down here. I don't really want to start answering questions until I'm <laughs> all done with this tutorial here because once I get off track or sidetracked, uh, it's really hard to kind of get back into the zone of programming. So uh, stay patient and perhaps I'll answer some of these questions after I end today's live coding. Or let's see if I can actually implement all of the features I want to get through. Okay, so you see how now we have 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600 for each one, uh, each individual height of these bars. So this is pretty much uh, almost there in terms of getting your bars to render out, implementing some values that you can start modifying your bars with. So uh, if I type in, I don't know, 150, 20, you'll see a downward sloping of the, uh, the bars inside of your chart. And the next thing you sort of need to accomplish when you're building out bar charts is some kind of easy way to uh, make sure you get the heights correct. So if I implement or if I add in another value of like, let's say 1000 and try to render out the, en <coughs> the entire chart using this value of 1000, 
<coughs> You'll notice that a thousand. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you'll notice that the value 1000 really is not going to fit inside of this entire app. And the reason is uh, <coughs> due to a couple of things here. Um, the first of which is because 1000, uh, that value is actually above the height of your entire application. So in other words, <coughs> you need to accommodate for all sorts of values within the range of the individual items inside of your array. So the way I'm going to do this is to use a calculation inside of my cell for item method here. And when I get the items outside of my array, I'm going to make sure it is relative to the maximum inside of my array. So the way to get the maximum is just say let max equals values dot max and that'll get you this floating optional and uh, I'm going to say if let that so max is now going to be a thousand in this case and all you have to do is to uh, make sure the value that you get out is relative so let's say uh, let value equals the values index path dot item and we will take the say let ratio equals uh, value over max like that and then finally i will say cell dot bar height constraint dot constant equals uh, view dot frame dot height divided by no times ratio i think is what i need and then finally i think i can comment that that guy and this will uh, calculate all of the heights for the individual bars relative to the maximum value that is inside of my bar chart. Hence, rendering out each individual uh, bar as like that. So this ultimate, uh, the highest value in this chart will be this 1000 up here, which looks like that. So if I bring this down to something closer to 650, you'll see this, uh, the second tallest bar is going to be closer to the uh, the tallest bar so maybe this is going to be a lot more easier a lot easier to see if the max value is 700 right here so that's the 650 and let me just render or run this app one more time and you now get a really really simple uh, version of a bar chart that you can use uh, inside of your applications uh, if you want to reduce the the spacing between these individual bars, you can just modify the minimum line spacing. So minimum line spacing, return just perhaps four. Let's see what two is. I think two is a little bit too small. So four gives you a really, really narrow space in between each one of these tall bars. Uh, the default value is 10. That's why you can kind of see that the gap was a lot larger. So this is the 700 value in the middle. We get 650 on the side. And all the way on the right, we have another value of 650 here. And this is a 600 instead. So that's how you render out one of these bar charts. And once you are able to kind of do this, you can uh, perhaps think about how to get the individual axes to render out as well. Now, inside of this app right here, you notice I have this navigation bar and then you have some spacing on the bottom there. So there's a couple of different tricks to apply uh, to get this to work. So I'm going to attempt to do this and see if this works. So uh, app delegate, instead of using a view controller as the root view controller, let's use this navigation controller instead. So let nav controller equals UI nav controller. Um, like that. And I'm going to cut all that, paste that in there. So I don't really like doing that. It gets really confusing. So let's see, VC. And this needs to be a uh, nav controller. Like that and that, that, that. Close that off. And try to run this. 
I think we will get something. Uh, I'm gonna put someone on timeout perhaps in the chat, but who knows. Uh, and that's kind of what you get. Uh, so the problem right here is that um, you have some warnings down here, which kind of tell you that the sizing isn't correct. You can kind of see a hint of the red underneath the navigation controller. So if I go back to view controller and modify the sizing a little bit, I can get this to show up correctly. So I'm going to minus, uh, so you need to minus 20, which is the status bar and then minus 44, which is the navigation bar. And I'm going to subtract another eight to get some padding to kind of show up inside of my actual view controller. And then running this, uh, all the bars will fit more snug into this guy, hopefully. Okay, so I'm not really sure what's going on now. Uh, let me try to subtract some more space from here. So what happens if I subtract 144? Uh -huh. Okay, so the bar is kind of doing some funny things. And let me just uh, revert it back to 44, 20, and 8. Uh, this is the value that you kind of need to modify here. So I'm going to specify something outside of these two functions and say let max max height. Yeah, let's see. Function max height. And this is going to return a CG float value. And uh, I'm going to take this calculation here and return it. So I'm kind of doing this on the fly. Now, if this doesn't work, uh, make sure to give me a comment. <laughs> so view frame height and max height here. And hopefully this will get me where I need to need to be here. Yeah, so looks like a lot of you guys are still hanging out inside of the chat, which is good. Okay, this gets me all of these bars within the view controllers view. If you want to specify some spacing on the left here, which is what I kind of like inside of my views, you see it's like on the edge of the app there. I'm going to say, uh, is it section? Is it margin? I think it's margin. No, that's not it. Uh, Let's see. Content inset? Yeah, these are always very confusing methods to override. So we can't find these padding methods. You can just command click into this guy and attempt to find one of these uh, one of these things in here. Uh, inset for section at so okay inset for section at and return UI edge insets of top so this will be zero and left will be I don't know four and then bottom will be four and uh, right will be I don't know four as well so I'm gonna run this and get some padding on the left and the right which is uh, much easier on the eye especially if you need the correct spacing. So that's how you get that four pixel right there. And now there's four pixels on the right there as well. So let's introduce some additional values in here, maybe uh, 2000, uh, 3000, and we get you know, 200 or 500. And to see how this bar chart looks like. I'm gonna try to make this available in the uh, description for you guys to download a little bit later on and you see all, all of our bars look like that right now so the good thing about uh, doing all of this is that you can actually implement some selection of your of your cells uh, so what I mean is if you go inside of bar cell right here uh, and specify some things like uh, it's highlighted so it's highlighted like that as it did set you can actually trigger some behaviors when you click on these individual items like that. So what I want to do is a background color 
equals, uh, let's see, if it's highlighted, which means you're kind of tapping on it, you can say, uh, I don't know, dot black perhaps. Otherwise you can just specify dot red. And this is just a ternary operator, which makes, uh, makes it really easy to write an if statement in sort of a couple of keywords like that. So click on here, you get that. So click on that, you get this really tall bar. So instead of modifying the bar views or the entire background color, I'm just going to modify bar view. And this is going to get me uh, where I need to be. So I kind of lost connection to the chat here, which I'm going to try and get back if I pop out the chat here again. And uh, bring it back to life here. So let's see. Uh, not exactly sure where my chat is going. Okay, looks like my okay. so black, black, black. Okay, so this is how the highlighting works inside. All right, so now the chat is back. I can bring it back inside of the view here. Uh, pop out chat. And this is why I might need to hire someone to help me <laughs> manage the uh, the live streams here. Yeah. So there it is. Uh, okay. So hopefully you guys kind of in, uh, learned a little bit uh, in terms of how to render out these bar charts and you know how to make them interactive. Now the tricky part of doing all of this is getting the height anchor or understanding how to set up a way you can modify the heights of these individual bars that live inside of each cell. And once you're able to do that, you can kind of figure out uh, an easy way to start modifying their heights uh, based on the ratio of the entire app's height. So obviously there's a lot more that you can do with this. Uh, perhaps render out an X axis or a Y axis or add a label on top of each one of these individual bars to show, you know, the value of the, the bar itself. But this is the very quick and dirty way of setting up a bar chart. And perhaps, you know, you don't want to purchase a $1,000 package to show some bars inside of your app. Uh, this is a very easy way to uh, set one up yourself. Okay, so that's kind of it for the lesson. Uh, let me kind of get to the questions uh, of the day here by popping out this little chat window, making it a little bigger so I can see what's going on. Okay. Okay, okay. So we have Urkam Kuchet. Are you thinking about preparing a course for Udemy? Uh, I have my, <laughs> my thoughts on Udemy are not exactly all that positive. Uh, if you look at all the, all the courses that are being offered on Udemy for Swift and iOS, you'll notice that, I don't know, 90% of them are out of date. Uh, and when I say out of date, you can see that they're all still written in Swift too. Uh, and I, I don't want to be grouped in the uh, the Udemy course, uh, the curation that they have. So everything that you can uh, purchase from me is all available on my website here. So what I want to do is to kind of uh, show you guys my website just quickly. Uh, perhaps it'll seem like a self-promotion <laughs> effort, which maybe you can actually think of it as. Um, I'll kind of shrink this down a little bit. Okay. So behind here, if I can just move everything in view, uh, So down below in the description, you can find a link to this 
course right here, which is this, this Instagram course that I'm preparing for everyone that wants to learn how to build the Instagram app. And, um, you know, this is kind of a work in progress. A lot of the videos are coming very, very soon. Um, but if you're interested in learning how to, you know, build out the Instagram app, which there's a course preview here, if you play it, you can see myself perhaps. No, I don't think it's going to work because when I'm doing these live streams, my connection is not always happy. So it's not going to be able to stream this. Uh, if you want to watch the preview video, go on the website and you can definitely watch it yourself. And down here are all the videos, the course sections, and kind of a preview as to what you can learn how to build out. Um, yeah, so if you guys want a, an early preview of this, you guys can go ahead and watch the preview and perhaps purchase the course as well. Uh, so the, and then let me show you just a brief, uh, a brief demo of what the app looks like just so you guys can get a feeling for it. Uh, so this is the app right here. I think, let's see the Instagram app. I don't know. What is this? Uh, I think nightlife at gmail.com. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, perhaps that'll work. I think my connection is so bad that I can't even connect to the Firebase, uh, database right now, which is unfortunate. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the courses that are available on my website will be, uh, some of them are paid and or I guess a couple of them are paid, the paid version. And then there are, uh, wow. So, uh, due to my connection, um, it's not able to resolve the security. So, I'm going to <laughs> clear out of that guy. And basically you guys can visit the website. You guys are not live streaming through your connection. Connection should be able to render it out correctly or visit the page. And the idea is, uh, the paid version or the paid, the paid tutorials on the website are a lot more detailed out. And, uh, the reason why there are paid and freed, uh, free versions of these videos is because obviously there's going to be a lot better content for the paid versions. Uh, it's definitely more premium and I can focus more attention and more time on preparing those courses so that it has a better flow to it. Uh, the thing about the YouTube, uh, free videos is that the content is all is always going to stay very, very high. Um, and the content is hopefully going to remain, you know, something that's, top notch. And obviously there's going to be a mix of free and paid tutorials. Um, and if you guys want to keep supporting the channel, uh, make sure to, you know, pay for the courses that you want to learn and you want to get the most out of them so that we can kind of keep the community here going. Uh, so one thing about the, uh, the courses and some people are always asking for free things constantly. So the thing about free tutorials is that you have to make sure you are supporting the creator. If you're not paying for perhaps their, their lunch, their internet bills, their camera gear, the lighting here, you know, the rent that they have to pay for their apartment, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to be able to get anything out of the, the creator if he's not able to support himself. So that's one strange thing that I have encountered over my one year journey of YouTube and providing free things for people. Uh, some people expect everything to be free, which is a little strange and uh, it's counterproductive if you think that way, because you won't be able to get the, uh, the most out of the creators out there if you think that everything is going to be free. And also you should value your education at a premium, uh, premium price. So whatever you're learning out there, if you're learning from someone that's giving it to you for free, um, 
you know, might not be the best type of content. So, uh, that's it. Let's see. So back to the chat here. Um, yeah. So some of you guys have, uh, also purchased the, the Kindle basic training course, which actually a lot of you guys have purchased that course, which is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, definitely goes a long way to kind of support, uh, support what's going on on the channel and to make sure that I can, you know, keep doing this, which is pretty awesome. Okay. All right. So let me get to some of the questions. If you guys have any here, um, there's about 84 of you guys that are joining the chat, which is good. I think I'll just close out of this. And uh, perhaps I'm not going to show my Chrome browser anymore. It gets a little bit. A little tricky here. Uh, I think I will go back to the Xcode guy. Xcode. Uh, Xcode. Yeah. Okay. So I think I have the, uh, the video that I can show you guys a preview of, which is on my, uh, hard drive here. Uh, okay. Watching this. So let's see what we want to do here. Uh, quick time, uh, quick time. Okay. And Okay, so that's the, I guess the promo here. Let's see, am I still live? Let me just drag myself back on the screen here. So this is, okay, so here is part of the app. And then uh, it allows you to Okay, so let's play it. So it allows you to select photos just like the Instagram application. And then once you select some photos, you can uh, share them by hitting the little next icon at the very top. And then, you know, you get the, uh, the sharing, you get your photos inside of your profile. And then you can also go through the feed of all the photos that you can share. And then if you want to search for other, let's see, search for other users, let's see, uh, you can search for users through this menu here, and then you can follow them by following them. And then once you follow them, you can, your feed, uh, your feed, you can refresh with uh, whoever user you're following. So, you know, pretty much just like the Instagram app. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. And then the application actually, uh, will teach you how to use the camera as well. So the camera here, uh, it's, it's very, uh, it's very useful to understand how the camera works. Um, being able to take pictures with it, um, taking video is a interesting aspect of the, uh, of building out an iOS app, which is not the easiest thing to do to build out the video capturing capabilities. But once you know how to, uh, once you know how to work with the photo capturing capabilities, video is not all that much difficult. Yeah. So the answer, the Instagram app connects to Firebase. 
Uh, and then throughout the course, we go through how to set up Firebase so that it's very easy to work with. And then, uh, you know, all your friends can join up through the sign up page of the Instagram app. And then you can start using it with all your friends as a private a Firebase, a private network. So that's, that's how it works. Um, you know, go, you know, just go and watch the preview of the course and then you'll get a pretty good idea as to how it works. Um, I mean, it's definitely helpful for some of you guys that are trying to learn how to, how to get into Swift. And if you guys don't have a good project to work on, it's useful to build out a clone of a, an application like Instagram. Uh, the reason is because there's so many different features and uh, different things that you can implement. It's helpful to have a large enough project so that things can fall inside of the scope of what you're building or the features can be in the scope. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's helpful to know how it works. So I'm going to see if I can get this guy. Let me just bring this one down. Yeah. So the Instagram course is available already, um, through that link that is in the description somewhere down below. Uh, if you want to, I guess, purchase it and start watching it, uh, there's only, I don't know, two videos up right now and I'm working on, uh, putting, um, probably like two videos a day, uh, into that course. And then it'll be completed in a, a week or two, maybe two weeks, because there's quite a few lessons in there. Uh, if you can imagine the Instagram, the, the entire Instagram course built out by the Facebook team, um, you know, it takes about a few months uh, to half a year, maybe an entire year to build out something that's, you know, considered a, an MVP candidate. So, uh, let's see. How does this work here? Plus photo, uh, get some kind of photo out of here. Get myself, cheese, set up uh, live stream March. So live stream March, Let's see at gmail.com. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, sign up. I wanna see if this actually works, which I don't think it does due to my connection speed yet again. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the app right here isn't set up to work while you're live streaming. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, answer a couple of questions here and then we'll end today's live session. Um, so if I can go back to, See, maybe I'll make myself a little larger here. Okay. Um, okay. So a couple of questions from the live stream are, uh, am I adding any unit UI testing to the uh, Instagram course? Uh, unfortunately, the, the course is not going to, let me see. Maybe at the end of the course, I'll include some unit testing. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there will be unit testing because it's a little, uh, uh, maybe a little difficult to set up proper unit testing code, but I'll definitely give it a try. If you guys have suggestions, you can always you know, let me know through either the channel or the website. Yeah. So a question down here by Nicholas Belag, are you ever using UI scroll view versus uh, UI collection view? And the thing is that, uh, most of the time you never really need to use a UI scroll view. I haven't found any really good use case for a UI scroll view. If I can use a UI collection view. Uh, waiting for UI app floating window tutorial. Uh, the floating uh, the floating video, the dragginess of the floating video is pretty difficult to implement. Uh, it took me about I don't know three four days to to complete a 
a solid version of the draggable window. So probably something that I will not go over anytime soon. Um, there's just way too much involved in that draggable window. You know, it's, it's probably a five, yeah, probably four videos to implement that entire dragging window. And that's how the level of difficulty that's involved in it. Um, and I've actually had some people, uh, set up a, an online session where I also offer like mentoring coding sessions and, uh, some, some, some folks have asked for the, the source code for that. And if you, you know, make a, an appointment for a one hour session, you can get the source code if you're really interested. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so no JS or Swift for server side. Um, uh, I'll probably go for no JS for now. I'm not exactly a, a huge fan of Swift nowadays. I find it, I find it a little difficult to work with as a language. Uh, the reason, and the reason is because Xcode. I know not a lot of you, not a lot of you guys are going to agree with this, but uh, Xcode is a pile of <laughs> pile of doo doo every now and then. Uh, the problem with Xcode is that it's extremely slow, and all the restrictions of like typing out code, it makes it seem like I've, I'm typing in the year 2003 or something. That's how slow the Xcode IDE feels. Um, a lot of other IDEs like IntelliJ or the yeah, IntelliJ, uh, Atom, or even Notepad. Uh, you have Notepad and you have, what's the other couple of IDEs, but uh, if you can't type out code as fast as your fingers on the IDE, it becomes a little frustrating. That's kind of why I don't like Xcode. Uh, there's too many bugs. I can't, uh, I just don't see myself using Xcode as a uh, a full-time web server development ID. Yeah. Uh, so landscape support, <laughs> you are the best developer. Well, I don't really agree to that statement. I know a lot of developers that are uh, just leagues ahead of me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Um, okay. What else is going on here? Uh, where do I work? So currently I just work on contract gigs and building out the YouTube channel is my main priority right now. Um, <laughs> something calming about watching someone else type code really quickly. Yeah. It's only because I've been typing it out for years and years and years. And even before building out iOS apps, uh, I've been t typing out code every day. So definitely something I'm used to. If I were to type in Java or Kotlin inside of Android studio, I would be a lot slower. Uh, just because I'm not used to typing out all that code. And, uh, yeah, thanks for streaming. Well, thanks for joining. We have DKK, which is uh, 1.5 US dollars. Well, thank you, Johan Albrechtson. Uh, definitely appreciate all the support everyone's giving me here. Uh, basic stuff is very important. Programming. Okay. Okay. So what's there? Yes. Sublime is the editor that I was talking about. Yeah. Sublime just, yeah. In terms of performance, I would rank Xcode as one of the last in the efficient programming performance category. Yeah. Uh, hello, Red Wolf uh, from Berkeley, California. Awesome. Um, so when I was in Berkeley, the the campus was definitely a lot different compared to uh, the scenery that's there now. A lot of those new buildings. Uh, even the, that library, that that East Asian library wasn't there 
uh, when I was attending Berkeley. And it looks really fancy now. Every time I go back, it seems like a new building is either being constructed or uh, finished construction. Yeah. Atom Editor is good, but slow. I haven't really used Atom a whole lot, but it seems to be uh, a fast editor if you don't have too many plugins installed. Okay, yeah, uh, Exco ID is slow and an annoying error that pops up every time we start the simulator. Yeah, sometimes you even lose connection to the simulator, which is even more frustrating, um, which forces you to close out of the simulator altogether and you have to restart the whole dang thing. Uh, definitely, yeah, <clears throat> all of the problems involved in Swift development is, is starting to pile up, is what I noticed. And when Swift 4 comes out, uh, I believe the problems will be even more exacerbated and just magnified to a whole new level. So some of the, the, the Apple team needs to really fix the Xcode editor before, I think, moving on to introduce new functionality uh, to the Swift language. Yeah, so where do you say I can find the Instagram uh, course? Well, in the description for the video, I think you can find the uh, the course available. And like I said, it's not complete yet, but if you want to look at all of the videos that are available, the courses, or each one of those sections, you can uh, find it there. Uh, yeah, California. Uh, quiz up. Yeah. So again, uh, a lot of the videos that are on the YouTube channel probably takes like three to four hours to, to record, upload, edit, shoot. Um, yeah. So four hours is a, a, a pretty long time. Um, if you can dedicate four hours to putting up videos, then perhaps you can finally understand how difficult it is to produce uh, the, the lessons for, for YouTube. Um, uh, it's actually much easier to produce the like vlogs, I would think, and also to produce uh, simpler videos. But I don't know. Um, yeah. So hopefully I can get some help for the channel later on in 2017. I'm really finding it to be a, quite a bit of work uh, to keep it going. But I don't know, I guess I'll figure it out somehow. Yeah, so hopefully you guys are enjoying, uh, hopefully you guys find the lessons uh, lately helpful. Uh, I know, so, th the the one thing I do want to keep consistent are the algorithm videos because I find that to be pretty interesting. Uh, it does a lot of uh, there's a lot of useful tips in those algorithm lessons that show you how Swift actually works and it demonstrates a lot of the capabilities of Swift and the actual Swift language. And doing that I think is super helpful, probably even more helpful than the individual like courses or the apps that we build out, but I don't know. Um, what I've noticed is that they all take a lot of, <laughs> a long time to prepare and to record and edit and upload, create a thumbnail and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys understand how, how, how much work goes into producing a video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's up, guys? So let's see. So yeah. All right. So I am going to end uh, today's live stream. Hopefully, you guys got something out of it. Um, when I'm done editing, or not editing this video, uh, when this video is up, I'm going to also provide a link to download the project for today's video to, you know, for some of you guys that want to learn how the code works, have a better idea of what the code looks like. You can try to run it and uh, see how it works. So make sure to download it if you're interested in running the project yourself. Um, and then 
after that is all up to you to figure out how you want to learn to become a better pro uh, programmer. If you want to check out the Swift course, you can check it out on the website as well. And yeah, um, the the Swift uh, the, the the Instagram course. Uh, just watch the preview video that's available on the the course itself, and then you'll get a pretty good idea as to all of the all of the screens that you see in the preview video will be included uh, in the course. But obviously, the the course or the Instagram app is extremely sophisticated, so not going to be able to get through every feature um, but most of the things that you learn in there will be very useful for you and it'll definitely give you a give you a good understanding as to how a more of a professional developer would go about tackling the the ui challenges and also the server challenges and maybe some other things in the middle as well uh, for example creating extensions to make development a lot faster so that's kind of why I wanted to release a more premium course, a more beefy course, so that folks that are looking to really, really uh, enhance their development, you know, style, can take that course and hopefully learn from it. All right, enough about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's. That's going to be it for today. Hopefully you guys have a nice rest of your Sunday. And thanks for joining. Um, definitely good to see uh, a lot of you guys coming every weekend. So I will see you uh, perhaps next Sunday for uh, probably not another live coding session. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a little nerve-wracking to code in front of 100 people at the same time. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, coding live is not easy. It's kind of like going into an interview and having a uh, hundred people gauge your performance in terms of writing out the best and most efficient code. So hopefully you guys can get a, get a feel for how live coding looks like. Uh, let me know if you want to see any more live coding sessions. All right. Enjoy your day and uh, have some good food. Bye, guys.